I'm really pleased to announce that since quite some time, we have a second team, and I'm talking about it for the first time today. And the second team is based on which are veterans, so these are really seasoned developers, and they're working on a new AAA RPG. So, I suppose you would like to find out about what RPG it is. What happened? Why did the narrative of Cyberpunk 2077 go from the most anticipated game of the year to worst launch of the year? Well, I'm going to be doing the unthinkable and answer that question in the first couple minutes of this video. It's a recipe of two times over ambition, eight times bad management folded in, two times old gen just sucks, with a generous pinch of pandemic to enhance the flavor. Okay, thanks for watching. There's a lot to talk about here, not just about Cyberpunk, but about games in general, and one other specific game that could be headed the exact same fate as Cyberpunk, like a time bomb. But to explain, we have to rewind just a bit. Welcome to CD Projekt Red's Summer Conference 2012. You're looking at the first time Cyberpunk was mentioned by CD Projekt, they go on to say that the game has been in the works since quite some time. So I think it's fair to estimate that the game went into pre-production in 2010. That's a whole lot of time to be working on a game, even if you count the first four to six years without the full force of the studio behind it. So why are we now seeing one of the most catastrophic launches of a game to date? Badly optimized on all platforms, buggy, glitchy, misadvertised, you've already heard it. Sony have now pulled it from the PlayStation Store, Microsoft are offering full refunds to people who have bought the game, regardless of playtime. CD are also offering full refunds to anyone who bought a physical copy of the game. Longtime Witcher fans will be telling you CD Projekt Red releasing a game in an unfinished state isn't anything new, but I don't think anyone could have foreseen this. Cyberpunk is really just the latest offender in an ongoing practice in the industry. Games releasing to meet a marketing deadline is absolutely nothing new and persists as a problem in the gaming landscape. First time. What's sad about it, especially this time, that Cyberpunk is one of the best games of the year, but simultaneously one of the worst launches of the decade. All by a previously well-respected, if not the most well-respected, consumer-friendly company out there. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. So why burn through a decade of goodwill in a week just for a quick release to cash in on the holidays? This is what worries me. CD Projekt Red were in many ways a beacon of hope. One of the last consumer-friendly developers, and if they're not immune from these awful business practices now, then what can we expect from the rest of the industry? What's a game that shares a lot of similarities with Cyberpunk and could be headed for the exact same fate? Fully open world, realistic, dynamic, next-gen graphics, first-person shooter, using cutting-edge tech, story and gameplay driven, also releasing on old generation consoles. That game would be Halo Infinite, you may have heard about it. I am a big Halo fan, as you might know. I've been waiting around for a new Halo game for a while now. It's been six years since the last main title installment to the franchise. This doesn't mean that Halo has been in full development for six years at all. This is because Halo 5 had post-launch content and content that the game should have launched alongside that took a majority of the studio to fulfill. After that, I'm not sure how this works entirely, but they then had to work on a brand new engine in order to facilitate the ambitions of Halo Infinite. 
infinite. So realistically Halo Infinite will have only had a development span of three to four years. Around half of Cyberpunk's development cycle, they technically made 11 COD games while Cyberpunk was being worked on. Just think about that for a second. It's insane. Okay, this is a little disingenuous as Cyberpunk was only being worked on by a smaller veteran team from 2010 to 2014, but the fact still does remain. So as a huge Halo fan, it really begs the question, if Cyberpunk was being worked on for a total of 11 years by one of the most well-renowned and respected developers in the industry, and on top of that was delayed time and time again for polish, then what should we expect from a game like Halo Infinite? A game with a shorter development cycle, but with just as many fans with higher expectations. Cyberpunk's launch has me worried about Halo Infinite quite a bit. Not only for the game design similarities that the games both burden, but also because Halo in many ways kinda has to do more than Cyberpunk. Let's, let's see here. Based on the community's expectations, what does Halo have to have to deliver at launch? Open world campaign with co-op and split screen support, next gen graphics, solid multiplayer with ranked and social options and a healthy competitive scene, forge mode, theater mode, custom games, firefight, file sharing, social systems. All of this has to run on the brand new Xboxes and PC, but what scares me the most is that it has to run on 2013 year old hardware, the Xbox One. All of this has to run on new gen at at least 60 FPS in campaign and 120 FPS in multiplayer. If you're someone who doesn't really know too much about Halo and thinks, what the hell is all of this? Well, yeah, welcome to the Halo community. We've decided that it's not Halo without all of this stuff at launch. To me, this does not seem at all feasible. As much as I would love to have all of those boxes ticked, it is very, very difficult. I think Halo is probably one of the most difficult games you could ever want to develop for. 343 has to walk a very, very fine line between pleasing the purists while also innovating the franchise and making it fit into the modern gaming landscape. All while the community and publisher are at odds with each other. So what's the solution? How do we see it? Halo Infinite from looking something like this. Well, let's start with some possible solutions. There's a few things Halo can do to save itself from the same fate as Cyberpunk. The only option we have at this point is making sacrifices, as hard as that may be to hear. Starting off with old gen, Xbox One, Xbox One S, and the Xbox One X. Whoever does the naming schemes at Microsoft really, really need to rethink some things. <laughs> Instantly, I've set off a red alarm. Keyboards are being vigorously battered in the comment section. So before you join the rest of the people that just pause the video to write a comment. I understand that you can't just leave behind old gen. I totally understand that. Probably the biggest potential audience pull for Halo still comes from these older platforms. There's millions of players still owning these devices. Halo Infinite multiplayer is free to play, so completely leaving the Xbox One Air behind works directly against their free to play strategy. What's the point of giving the game such a low barrier to entry if you're going to force them to buy a whole new console anyway? It would be a big sacrifice to make and it's incredibly unlikely to happen, however I think there's a way to meet in the middle. Releasing the free to play multiplayer on all platforms and the open world campaign on new gen consoles and PC might just work. I don't know a great deal about game design to be honest with you, but Surely it would relieve some of the pressure. It would also stop old hardware from holding back the campaign in any way. From the sounds of it, this campaign is going to be absolutely massive. So on top of that, it would save Infinite from the same controversy Cyberpunk faces currently at its launch. Trying to get a next gen game working on old gen just isn't going to be pretty. So what else? Well, I think it's a little entitled that we expect each and every one of these boxes to be ticked at launch to make it Halo. There's no other game out there that delivers this amount of features day one. So maybe something more like this. Obviously having all of these features there day one is my absolute preference, but if they feel like having something removed to make the overall game experience better on launch, I can see that being okay, but not to the same degree as Halo 5. Halo 5's launch is something that we cannot repeat. In conclusion, I just hope this isn't what next gen games perform like. I hope that Halo doesn't meet the same fate as Cyberpunk, but you only get that one chance for a smooth launch and no amount of updates will ever change that. Similarly to MCC, Cyberpunk will be up there in the books for worst launches of this decade. Cyberpunk is a classic case of overpromise, underdeliver. I sure hope Halo Infinite is underpromising to overdeliver.
I quickly want to give a big shout out to all my patrons who support me over on Patreon. As some of you might know, 100% of all of the Patreon money goes directly back into the channel. So if you do want to support it, I would really, really appreciate it. Link to it is in the description down below. We offer all of the awesome thumbnails here on the channel in 4K to download for you to use as backgrounds. I also do a private play session with my patrons every so often. So I just want to ask for your thoughts down below. I'd love to know what everyone thinks. I'm more than likely completely wrong on something. So if you like the video, make sure you drop a like down below. If you want more, make sure you hit that subscribe button. I would really appreciate it. So yeah, as always, I appreciate you all checking out the video. Have a fantastic rest of the year. 2020 is near over so I'll catch you in the next one.